Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 5. First at 5, new information is coming to light tonight after protesters clash with police in Thurston. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. Now, protesters were met by a policeman barricade during a Black Unity March last night that ended in several arrests and violence. Our Kelsey Christensen joins us live tonight outside the Springfield Jail with the very latest. Kelsey, what's new today? Well, Jacqueline, one protester remains inside the jail so far. The rest of them have posted bail, but, you know, as you might expect, tensions remain high from the events last night. That's when protesters march from Jesse Main Memorial Park around 730. A short while later, they were met with a policed man barricade. Police say that barricade was meant to keep protesters off of Highway 126. That's because that stretch is one of the deadliest stretches of road in Lane County. Now, take a look at this video. You can see the protesters clashing with police. It seems to be peaceful until police try to arrest one of the protesters. That's when the chaos sets in. So they were all just grabbing each other's backpacks and trying to yank him back and pull them back into the crowd. Mm -hmm. And some of them were hitting the officer's hands so that they would let go. There was an officer the sure, that was in front of me that was just throwing punches. He was just throwing jabs. Seven protesters were arrested and one counter protester as well. Now, some viewers have been asking why the bail for protesters was higher than the counter protester arrested. Springfield police tells me it's because the counter protester had only one charge. That was assault. Police also tell me that earlier this morning, we're just right by the jail right now, there was graffiti tagged on the side around 2.30. Uh, they believe it was protesters waiting for other protesters to have their bail posted. So that counts for two of those arrests. Now, as for tonight, we haven't heard as far as any new protests coming up for Black Unity, but we do believe that other groups are setting up a solidarity march around 7 o'clock, so stay with us for the latest. Jacqueline? Tonight, we have a better idea of what's going to happen at Springfield Public Schools this fall. This information comes from a new memo sent by the district to parents. Tom Adams is standing by now at Hamlin Middle School with a live update for us. Tom, how are things looking out there? Yeah, hi, Perry. It's uh, windy and pretty quiet out here at Hamlin Middle School. We're in West Springfield tonight, but uh, wait about six weeks. It'll be way, way different out here. That's when classes should resume here at the Hamlin campus and also at the other 20 campuses of the Springfield School District. Protesters are planning to gather at the New Hope Christian College this evening to call for the removal of the cross that sits up on their campus hill. People have posted on social media saying the cross represents a racist symbol stemming from historic events. NBC 16's Angelina Dixon joins us now live outside the New Hope Christian College where protesters plan to gather for the next hour. Angelina. Jacqueline, so far supporters have gathered here. We have about mm, probably a little over 20 now. Uh, the college president, Wayne Cordero, says the cross is not a racist symbol. Instead, he says it represents the symbol of the Christian religion and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Now, historically in the 20s, the Ku Klux Klan burned crosses on Skinner Butte in Eugene. In the 60s, a cross for for NHCC stood on Skinner Butte as a Veterans War Memorial, according to the school website. And the cross was later moved here on campus. But Cordero wants to make sure there's no confusion with history and now. He says the cross does not represent any kind of racism. Cordero says legally the cross sits on private property and nobody is allowed on campus right now unless they are checked in at the gate and are given permission to come in. But Cordero just wants to make sure that the community comes together. Okay. Now, Eugene police say they are aware of what's happening and have a plan in case anything gets out of hand and we'll check in back in later for now reporting live at the New Hope Christian College. I'm Angelina Dixon. Now the CDC did recommend that in order to help stop the spread of COVID-19 among the homeless population, several task forces would need to come together and that's exactly what's happening inside of here. Many local communities have came together and have helped each other and this is positive for a lot of people. That's what they're telling me. Employees tell me that homeless youth have already started opening their hearts up to the caring community members helping out in here and that's a huge step for this population. My heart is impacted every single day being here. Um, I don't think that it's right that um, 
these youth don't have a place to go. Um, so the fact that here they have a place to go during the day um, helps me sleep at night a little bit. Kearney says she won't fully rest until she knows homeless youth have a safe place to stay at night in our community. And that conversation is already in the works with Youth Era. For now, homeless youth can come here and, um, you know, take advantage of these services. This shelter is on 14th and Olive. It's open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you're going to want to stick around because later on in our next show, we're going to talk about how an 11 year old is raising thousands to help this cause. For now, reporting live in Eugene, I'm Cassandra Gutierrez. All right, Cassandra, just a quick question before you head out tonight. Now, what precautions is the shelter taking against COVID-19? Jacqueline, I'm glad you asked that. Of course, guests have to wear masks. Um, everyone's getting temperatured, their temperatures checked before they go inside. And of course, they have to make sure that they're, they don't have any symptoms of COVID-19. <laughs> Well, the one block section of Broadway Street is closed off in downtown Eugene. It's part of a new experiment this summer. NBC 16's Tom Adams joins us live along Broadway tonight to talk about a new program to boost business and community recovery. Tom. Yeah, hi, Jacqueline. We're live on uh, Broadway Street, downtown Eugene, right in between Willamette and Olive Street. And uh, right behind me is a scene at uh, Party Downtown, one of the participating businesses in the brand new program that's called Broadway Streetery. Downtown Eugene program manager Eric Brown says the idea is closing off this one block stretch of the street to motor traffic and that that way able cafe seating for area bars and restaurants. It's a temporary measure to support safe, physically distant business activity in response to the COVID-19 situation. You know, be part of the recovery, come out, uh, frequent our local businesses and um, be a part of the community recovery. Yeah, that's what when we were setting up our whole area yesterday, we we're like, wow, this really reminds us of being in Spain. Now, Brown tells me closing the streets of motor vehicles allows businesses to expand their square footage into the right-of-way areas, and then they set up their tables along the sidewalks and parking spaces in the streets. A little bit later on, next half hour, we'll talk to another very enthusiastic business owner here on Broadway, Tom Camus over here at the Davis Restaurant. He'll tell us what he's going to do with his space this coming summer. Jacqueline, back to you. Well, Relay for Life event is on track to take place this year, but this time it's not not on an actual track. Our Perry Elia Durrani joins us live from Kendall Toyota in Eugene, where they're accepting luminaries for the next couple of hours. Perry, how is this event changing this year to adapt to COVID-19? For starters, Kendall, their big day on July 25th will actually be split to be partially virtual, but there will still be two key in-person events that day, the first of which will be a neighborhood walk. And as you can imagine, they're looking for neighbors to organize this amongst themselves to uh, recognize uh, caregivers and survivors. If you're looking for more information on that, we have a link on our website right now about how you can get involved. There's also going to be a drive through luminaria ceremony held at First Baptist Church in Eugene where people can donate $5 to send in a luminaria and uh, remember someone that they may have lost to cancer or honor someone still in that fight. And that's why we're standing here right now at Kendall Toyota where they're actually accepting if you've designed your own luminaria up to this point you can drop it off drop off your donation or if you haven't uh, designed one yet and are looking to you can also pick up a luminaria here and there will have one more day for this that's next Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. same times where you can drop that off again and make sure that your family member someone you care about is honored in that display and fundraisers tell me this is a really critical part of their fundraising effort which up to this point they tell me has been quite bleak and so they're really hoping that this will help bolster their numbers, but also create a more impactful, memorable dis display for folks uh, attending that event later this month, Kendall.